So you want to learn more about your Pinterest analytics, figure out how to read them, and maybe even troubleshoot why you're losing virality on some of your pins. Well, in today's video, I'm going to walk you through what you need to know about the Pinterest analytics dashboard, how to use it, how to navigate it, and some important metrics that you might want to track. Pinterest analytics, how to read and find your data. Just so you know, I do have a full blog post on this that's going to explain to you different questions that you can ask yourself so you can better interpret all of this data. And it's also going to break it down just in text format if you would like to read the blog post as well. Now, before we really dive into the analytics dashboard and I start explaining all the different things, I want you to understand how your data is funneled through and how your pins are behaving on the platform. A lot of people really get frustrated and ask themselves like, why am I not getting outbound clicks? Why are not people, why are people not visiting my website or saving my pins? And one of the things that I always come back to is they're not actually creating pins that first get seen. Second, people are even willing to engage with, click on, save, and then visit beyond Pinterest. So you really have to back it up. So what I want you to envision when, as we're talking about data analytics on Pinterest today is all of your pins are feeding into this one funnel. For your pins to get outbound clicks, they really do need to get saves. Now they don't have to get saves to get clicks, but the more saves you get, the more Pinterest is understanding how people are behaving with your content, the more likely people are actually to click on your pins. In order to get saves, they need pin clicks, and in order for get, to get pin clicks, they need impressions. So while I just read that from bottom to top, really from top to bottom, all of these things have to occur, not necessarily in that order. However, it is important that they get impressions and pin clicks before they can ever get saves or album clicks. So while some of that is interchangeable, I want you to understand the funnel and the flow that we're looking at. So let's move on. Pinterest analytics, these are the main items at the top of your Pinterest analytics dashboard. Impressions literally just mean views. And that doesn't mean that someone actually individually saw your pin. It just means that their pin was placed in their feed. Pin clicks is a close up view. It used to be called close ups and then pin clicks. So they used to be two different metrics. Now it's just one. Saves mean that people saved your pin to their boards. Outbound clicks means they left Pinterest and visited your website. Now there's a caveat here. A lot of Google Analytics traffic does not actually match Pinterest Analytics traffic. And that is because if pinners do not allow your full website header to load, Google Analytics will not fire a visit to your website, but Pinterest Analytics will. So just keep that in mind. Now something else you're gonna wanna look at are these three in the uh, right-hand column. I don't pay as much attention to these because all of these are gonna you know, be fed into this here. So engagement just means every sort of engagement that can possibly happen on the platform. Total audience means the total audience of pinners across all of Pinterest that have been impressed upon your pins, uh, engaged with your pins, everything that can happen on the platform, which is why you will see your total audience and your engaged audience are actually quite different in size. Engaged audience just means people who are actually engaged with your pins, they are saving them, they are clicking on them, they are visiting your links. So moving on. Some of the Pinterest analytics data that you are going to see, and I do want to walk you through in this video, I get questions on this quite often. Like, why am I uh, a million impressions down when 45 days ago I had 2 million impressions? And something that it always comes back to is this rolling data set on Pinterest. 30 days of rolling data, at day 31, what you had 31 days ago is going to fall off. So here's a quick explanation. All of the data on this screen is tracked and updated in 30 day increments by default. That means if you had a pin get 11,000 views on December 1st and 12,000 views on December 2nd, then you are going to see an 11,000 view drop on January 1st because plus 30 days, we're losing that original 11,000 views, view count on the pin. So just keep that in mind. I am going to walk you through how to troubleshoot your Pinterest analytics to find viral pins and see if there is something going wrong or if you're just losing virality. Hang tight with me. These are the most common things that I track for clients. In fact, this is a snapshot of our spreadsheet that has been updated for 2024. 
You will notice if you are a Pinterest system user of mine, if you have purchased my system called the Pinterest system, some of these rows are updated. They are no longer reflective of page views on uh, Google Analytics, but they are reflective of sessions from both all your website data and your Pinterest data. But these are the most common things that I track for clients. And it usually comes from impressions here, saves here, and then I navigate to Google Analytics and track the rest of the data. All right, moving on, something else that you may wanna track are your total um, or your top pins and what those actual pins are. So what you can do in this top pins is you can click on these images here and it'll open another window and you can grab the URL and save it in your analytics sheet. And then you can keep it a running record of what month um, it is and what the top pins for that month were. And then you can come back and review that data in a year's time and see if it matches up. Another thing that you might wanna track are total saves or top pins by saves. I like to track total saves, but you may also want to track your total, your top pins that were saved because this is a good indicator that people are interested in your content, but they may not be interested in it right now, which could be why they're not visiting your website right now, but they are saving your pins. So keep that in mind. Another, that's just another thing I like to track. Now, a couple of other metrics before we actually dive into the analytics dashboard right on Pinterest are your top boards. This might be something that you wanna keep track of. Top boards just give me an idea of what content is really popular right now and where I need to put more of my focus on creating Pinterest pins. And then top product groups. You'll notice that some of these things are grayed out. It's because I don't actually have a catalog for a brand of my own that I own that I can show you on this platform because they won't let me have it. <laughs> so I had to use a client account and I just wanted to blur out their information here, but you can see these top product groups. All of these are images that are pulling product group images in and it's telling you impressions, engagement, pin clicks, saves, all of that stuff. So that is something else that you might wanna look at. The last thing that you may wanna look at are your audience insights. And this is going to tell you how people are using um, Pinterest to find your information, what their demographics are, all of that stuff. So without further ado, let's actually just hop into your analytics hub. Now, the first place you're gonna to wanna to go, because this right here, this main screen that you see is just your business hub, you're gonna to wanna to go to analytics and overview, or you can click this short link right here and that will also take you to analytics and overview. From analytics and overview, you will notice all of the things I was just screenshotting and sharing with you on the slides. Now, you have a couple of different filters that you can apply in this screen. You can apply filters throughout any of the drop down menus that you see. You can change all of that. And then another filter set you can choose is click more filters. And you can come over here and you can start filtering down by any of these metrics. There are also content filters which have been um, keep changing. I have some client accounts that actually give me the ability to navigate between pin format, which is what Pinterest is calling them, which is I, uh, standard pin, video pin, you know, that type of format of pin. Right now it's just giving me content type organic paid and earned, and that's it on my own Pinterest account. They keep taking it away and giving it back, and that is a common thing. So if you do go into your analytics and you notice that filter, it should be right here next to the content type filter. That is a nifty way to look at your data. So you can filter down into any of that and change any of these filters you apply will then change what you see on the screen. Now, the first thing that I wanna take a look at is always the last 30 days. Now I'm typically looking at this towards the beginning of the next month. So right now it's mid month. So I would actually be looking at this for December if I were doing reporting for a client because I like to do 30 days or 30 to 31 days of, of views here. So I would change it to be December, all of December. And then you can see here that organic paid and earned, I am running ads, I always run retargeting ads on Pinterest. So I there are paid and earned metrics and you'll see those there. I like to look at it all together. Now, as you scroll down the screen, you'll see all of that data across here. All of my stuff's in red because I'm not a big brand spending a ton of money in December on ads. So that is one thing if you notice in Oct from October to December, your data is dropping. 
it is because other Pinterest accounts brands are putting massive amounts of ad spend for Q4 revenue goals. So just keep that in mind. Organic reach does decline in December. Performance over time for that 30 day outlook, you can filter through any of these items. I typically look at impressions and saves myself because those are the two metrics that I care about. Then top product groups are gonna show in here if you do have a catalog that is feeding through. And then at the bottom, you're gonna see top pins. It's always going to default to all engagements, which I do think is helpful to review, but I also like to see impressions. Pin clicks, up on click saves. I like to look at all five of these filters myself. So I wanna see what pins are getting the most impressions. And then at the same time, based on impressions, which pins are getting the most saves. That pin was the top pin getting the most impressions, and it's the second pin in out of 50 that are getting saves in this time frame. So that's something you can take a look at. Now you will notice as you go through, and look at that, this I'm making remaking this video right now, uh, but you will notice as you go through, the pins in this list may be very old. And that is the case for a lot of the pins in my list right now. Now, moving on down the screen, you'll see the very last one is top boards. Top boards are going to show you what boards are the most popular right now. They're gonna give you all the same data for the five filters, impressions, engagement, pin clicks, outbound clicks, and saves. This is going to give you an idea of what is getting the most engagement right now for boards. Remember, your boards are indexed based on SEO and your pins are indexed with that board based on SEO. So if you have a board that is doing really well, then that tells you, you probably need to create more content for that board. If that board's getting a lot of reach, let's create more content for that board. Again, the nuance lies in the blog post that I wrote for Pinterest analytics. It's in the description of the video. If you do want to take a look at it. Now I do want to walk you through the audience insights dashboard before I let you go. So your audience insights is going to tell you how people are behaving, where they live. Um, you know, their categories and interests are the behavior, really their age and demographics, their gender, um, what device they're using, all of that information. This is really for ads, but it also gives you a good indicator of if your content is actually resonating with the audience that you're targeting on the platform. Now, I very much want to target people right here in the middle, 25 to 49 is my ideal audience segment, but I do have quite an older audience starting to build up over time over here on Pinterest. And not that 55 to 64 is older, my mother is that age, <laughs> however, um, that has grown over the years. It used to be closer to 3% and that is growing over time. Now, this is a really important metric for me. Um, female, 65% of my audience being female. I do prefer to serve females um, and unspecified and custom are definitely those other subsets that you can choose in your settings or accounts that have never declared their genders. Location is gonna tell you top metros and top countries. Of course, my top country is gonna be the United States. Half of all Pinterest users are located in the US. Other than that, it is coming from an other category and then all of these other countries listed. It is no surprise to me that the majority of my own audience is coming from web because I am a B2B business on Pinterest. A lot of people that are business owners are probably on their computers when they are looking and learning about this topic and they're looking for support or help or anything of that nature. So they are on desktop in that regard. However, coming in hot right behind it is iPhone and then Android, which again is no surprise. So this is gonna give you a really good insight into how people are viewing your content and engaging with it, where do they live, and that can help you to better serve them. These categories are really only for ads, but it is telling you what other categories on the platform people are searching within that are interested that are in your audience. Okay. So these people are browsing these categories that are in your audience. Okay. So let's actually pop back over to the overview screen because I told you I wanted to show you how to troubleshoot your Pinterest data. If you do end up in a pickle and you are wondering why you're losing so many views. So the very first thing that I like to do is identify the point at which, at which I went viral or I received a lot of views. So we really wanna narrow that down. 
In order to narrow that down, we really need to go wide first because we need to see more of our data and figure out exactly where it happened. So I'm gonna look generally 60 to 90 days and I'm gonna try to really hone in on where I was getting a lot of views. So right here, I had 2000 views on the 13th. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna narrow in on that date. So I'm gonna go back to January 13th to the 14th and I'm gonna look at about two days time. And then you can see it's just a straight line right here, but we had a lot of views here on the 13th. I'm gonna scroll down to top pins and I'm gonna figure out which pins had the most impressions on that date. And then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna see if in the 30 day time frame or in the days right after that pin actually started to lose virality or impressions overall. So again, in the presentation I told you as an example on December 11th, if you get 11,000 views, then on January 2nd, you're gonna lose those 11,000 views in your 30 day counter. So on uh, February 14th, maybe it's the 13th or the 12th, I can't remember because January is 31 days, um, we're gonna lose a lot of these impressions unless they continue to climb. So that is how you look and troubleshoot which pins are getting the most views and then you're gonna go back and you're going to start looking in the days after. So we wanna look from the 13th to the 16th. And you can see, okay, that the other pin that actually was the top, so this one really picked up a ton of views in the last few days. This Teachers Pay Teachers pin really took off. That's an old pin. That pin is from like 2019. It says 2021, but I wrote this blog post a long time ago. So what I would actually do is go back and update this blog post, update this Pinterest pin, and push out some more content on this because people are searching for that right now. There are people that are interested in this topic that ironically enough, one of the impression or one of the screenshots in here is from a teacher. <laughs> so I know that it is a hot topic on Pinterest. They are interested in figuring out how to get more sales to their stores. So this pin really took off. I need to give that pin more love. That's essentially what I'm trying to to show you how to do. Now, something else that you do wanna pay attention to is the paid and earned. If you are noticing, if you are running ads and you are noticing an uptick in traffic and then it suddenly drops off, you need to look at your ads data and figure out if anything is actually correlated there. Now, we're not talking about ads in this video, but I do wanna put a pin in that and just let you know that that is something you may need to look at. And that's that's it, that's what I'm looking for. There are obviously things that I could tell you, I could go deeper in, I could strategize on, I could talk your ear off all day about analytics and data and questions to ask. But again, you can go read my blog post. I will have this updated, it will look different by the time this video goes live. However, it is a really good source of information if you are looking for a place to learn more about Pinterest analytics and questions that you might want to ask yourself in relation to your content on Pinterest and how it is performing. If analytics are not your thing, then you might want to come on over to the Academy. It's called Pin Profit Academy. It's my private membership and at least join for a few months and allow me to actually help you one on one figure out what's going on in your analytics and maybe even troubleshoot some of what's going on. We talk a lot about strategies and data and content planning and trends and all the things inside of the Academy. So you're welcome. Come join us. Otherwise, you might want to head on over here and watch some of these videos to start your next phase of your Pinterest journey.